As one of the key individuals that helped to ensure Anakin Skywalker survived the Battle of Coruscant, you would think Lorth Nita might have gained a bit of clemency from Vader during the captain's service to the Empire. Nita's efforts in the Clone War is a story for another day, but regardless of whether Vader knew of the captain's history with Anakin, didn't matter. There was no way Captain Nita was going to survive his failure that took place during Episode 5, no matter what kind of apology he gave, for the simple reason that Nita was on Vader's list of officers that the Sith Lord despised. In a lot of ways, Nita was the victim not of his own incompetencies or personal grudges with Vader, but of his close relationship with another officer hated by the Dark Lord, Admiral Kendall Ozzel. Prior to the events of The Empire Strikes Back, Ozzel and Vader would develop a mutual hatred, stemming from their work together within Death Squadron after the Battle of Yavin. Any officer of even average intelligence knew that Death Squadron was Vader's fleet, and while an Imperial Naval officer was assigned to the position of Fleet Admiral, true authority still lay in the hands of Vader. Ozzel, on the other hand, believed Death Squadron and its flagship, the Super Star Destroyer the Executor, were his to command, with Ozzel's authority superseding that of Vader's. When Vader reduced Ozzel's command to that of a mere figurehead, one who relayed Vader's commands to the Executor's crew rather than give his own orders, a power struggle ensued, represented really more by hurt feelings than true conspiracies of a coup. To make matters worse, Ozzel drastically failed Vader on at least one occasion prior to Episode 5. Vader had perfectly planned an ambush of the Rebel fleet nine months after the Battle of Yavin, looking to both annihilate the Rebellion and capture Luke Skywalker. But when the plan ultimately failed, costing Vader both his goals, Ozzel had shown himself to be completely unaware of the problems facing Death Squadron during the battle. And worse, Ozzel was more ambivalent to the outcome than anything else, showing no leadership qualities that could change the battle, and an attitude that believed the Rebels weren't really a concern. Following the failed ambush at Deep Space Besh, it was clear that the situation between Vader and Ozzel would eventually come to a violent resolution. This was the mess of a situation that poor Captain Nita found himself unintentionally involved in after the Battle of Yavin. I believe it's fair to say that in a lot of ways, Admiral Piet was Vader's man in the Imperial Navy, handpicked personally by Vader to serve as captain of one of Death Squadron's Star Destroyers, the Accuser, and then appointed to the Executor itself. If Piet was Vader's man, then Nita was equally Ozzel's man within Death Squadron, much to the detriment of Captain Nita. Once rising to the rank of captain within the Imperial Navy, it was Admiral Ozzel who handpicked Nita, choosing him to command one of the Star Destroyers that form part of Death Squadron, the Imperial 2 class Star Destroyer, the Avenger. Nita's efforts in Death Squadron were actually quite successful, pacifying numerous uprisings against the Empire that took place within the Outer Rim. These successes, as well as Nita's rise in reputation as a valued officer within the Imperial Navy, directly led to Ozzel assigning Nita and the Avenger to the lead point position within Death Squadron. In fact, Nita would eventually become one of Ozzel's closest advisors, earning the Admiral's complete trust. In any other situation, these successes would be an undeniable positive in an officer's climb through the ranks of the Navy. But for Nita, they were devastating. As the closer he got to Ozzel, the more of the Admiral's destructive relationship with Darth Vader began to rub off on him. Even worse, prior to the events of Episode 5, it wasn't only Vader who was beginning to question the abilities of Ozzel, but Emperor Palpatine as well, who it should be mentioned did have a hand in helping to form the Admiral's strong position through promotions going all the way back to the Clone War. Ultimately, through his connection to Ozzel, Nita himself would eventually fall into the purview of Vader and Palpatine. As the Admiral's most trusted advisor, he too could not be trusted and was looked down upon as sharing the same incompetencies as Ozzel. Again, the actual incompetencies and languorous attitude of Ozzel didn't help Nita's cause in this regard. As the Empire, including Vader and Palpatine, became more and more desperate to find and crush the Rebel base, the task fell to the operations of Death Squadron. And of course, because he was Ozzel's most trusted advisor and officer, it would be Captain Nita sent by the Admiral to follow up on leads within the galaxy, leading missions that would ultimately result in nothing each time. In a previous video, we discussed how a lot of the credit for finding the Rebel base on Hoth should go to the tactical plan developed by Thrawn and the execution performed by Vader. 
In this way then, the most important task of Ozil and Nita, locating the rebel base, was a complete failure for these two. And every time Nita was sent by Ozil to follow up on potential leads, the efforts were viewed as a waste, unnecessary to the ultimate successes of Thrawn and Vader. Nita, of course, was merely performing his duties, a victim of being in the wrong place at the wrong time. But his proximity to Ozil was certainly the catalyst of his downfall, helping to form the distrust and hatred that was felt by Vader. Captain Nita's failure to capture the Millennium Falcon after the Battle of Hoth added to the perception of Nita's incompetency that was already established thanks to Ozil, and was just the excuse Vader needed to execute the associate once loyal to the former Admiral. To demonstrate just how unique Vader's ultimate hatred of Nita was, the Sith Lord didn't merely execute Nita, but a vast number of his family as well. Vader gave the order to execute all those related to the former Imperial Captain who served within the Imperial Navy and Army. This action, coupled with Nita's actual failure in capturing the Millennium Falcon, led many to speculate the Captain had been sympathetic to the Rebellion, or directly connected to it. Therefore, Vader ensured that Captain Nita wasn't only executed, but his legacy was completely tarnished with an Imperial history. So there we have it, why Vader hated Captain Nita long before Episode 5. We love making these videos, so why not subscribe for more fun Star Wars theories and discussions. Also, if you enjoyed the video, think about giving a like or leaving a comment. Or perhaps follow us on Twitter, at SWReadingClub, for updates regarding the channel or support the channel through Patreon for access to exclusive rewards and discussions. If not for me... For thanks a lot, Ozzel.